The term homophobia was coined by an American psychotherapist, Dr. George Wienberg, back in the 1960s and 70s. The word is made up of two parts. The first bit is from the Greek homos, meaning the same as, not the Latin homo, meaning adult male, man. The second part of the word, phobia, is where this word becomes a little bit tricky because not everybody agrees with Dr. Wienberg that it's uh, it's a phenomenon that's actually related to phobia, which is normally perceived in uh, mental health circles as an irrational fear of something. Another problem with the word is because so many people think that the first part of it, the homo bit, refers to homosexuality, they therefore think it's referring solely to gay males and not uh, considering lesbians, bisexual or trans people. So the word is often used as shorthand covering the prejudice and, and phobias against all these different people. However, some individuals prefer to use their own titles. So whether we're talking homophobia, biphobia, lesbophobia or transphobia, whichever phobia or prejudice we're talking about, notice how it, ha it has different dimensions and in itself it knocks people down, whereas the opposite to it, the working through it, as we'll see later in this video, the working through it helps people to develop resilience and builds individuals up. Let me just use homophobia as short term for all of the prejudices at the moment, but on the previous slide you would have seen that there are different dimensions to it. And uh, the, the, the first one, of course, is when we look at an overt form of prejudice and discrimination, whether that's in bullying of others, um, overt name calling, discrimination, it's the outward display of the in, inner hatred. But covert homophobia is the ways in which it's often hidden, um, especially within societies or cultures and organisations. So it could be seen more as a heterosexism, a raising up of heterosexuality at the expense of downputting all the others. So heterosexism is seen as um, a preference given to heterosexuality and therefore discrimination against non-heterosexuality. And another key dimension of this is the interpersonal between one person and another or one part of society against others. And there are lots of um, individuals throughout the world who are renowned for their homophobia, as well as different cultures, religions and aspects within various societies. But sadly then, all the negativity, the homonegativity, can be internalised within individuals and that's when we talk about um, intrapersonal or internalised homophobia or internalised hatred. And homophobia goes part and parcel to so many cultures, religions and nations throughout the world. If you check out ILGA, I-L-G-A dot org, you'll notice the countries and the religions in particular that have particular hatred towards all non-heterosexual peoples. And look how homophobia is still endemic through so many institutions of various states across the world, um, especially, for example, within uh, the, the military, the armed forces, uh, police services, lots of the institutions of various states. If the state is rather homophobic, then its institutions within it are usually equally so. But all this talk about the word homophobia, maybe it's a different term we need to use altogether. And queer hatred is one that, although it's not often used, it does sum up the position far better than that classical term homophobia. When you consider the difference between related words, such as xenophobia or racism, look how xenophobia literally means a fear of foreigners or a fear of foreign things, whereas racism implies active hatred. The same with people who are frightened of women, um, uh, gynophobia, as opposed to somebody who actively hates women, a misogynist. So instead of talking about homophobia, lesbophobia or transphobia and especially emphasising the perspective of irrational fear, the phobia side of it, um, then it may be more appropriate to use the term hatred as in misogyny or racism. 
So there are other terms that we need to consider as well, because all of these interrelate, and some may be found in to lesser extent or more extent within various individuals or cultures, societies, institutions, and even whole nations. So sexism is seen as one gender over others. Heterosexism is heterosexuality over and above all others, and heterosupremacy is as negative as the word implies, just like with white supremacy um, or any other form of hegemonic power, uh, the negativity of one over another and discriminating against that other. So whether we're talking about overt or covert, personal, interpersonal, intrapersonal, cultural or institutional. All of these various dimensions revolve around um, the institutions within a state and how they normally define what that particular state or religion or culture accepts as um, good and therefore the opposite of that, what they condemn as not good or evil. But this certainly doesn't mean that sh people should get bogged down or overcome by these negativities and oppressions. As Coulter Thompson said in 2016, it, uh, we need to look at moving people from victim status, not just through survivor, but on uh, to thriver because of their situation. So building the resilience up despite the hegemonic forces against them. just in case you're wondering the one on the left with the dark glasses that's me out at some early protest march maybe stop paragraph 28 that then became section 28 of the local government act i've actually taken part in quite a few protest marches outside british parliament and i'm really happy that i've done so